G'day everyone, welcome to New Tech Creative. My name is Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. Today's video, we're gonna be continuing on my build of my Core XY machine, so stay tuned. If you haven't had a chance to see my first video of this build series, go check that one out first. But in today's video, we're gonna be tearing down this machine and rebuilding it to make it even better. So I've had a couple of really great comments on my last video on how I can make this machine even better. And there's certainly things that I'm gonna consider when I'm rebuilding this machine. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upgrade some of the, the gears to these larger 40 teeth or, and 30 teeth gears. So I'm gonna be adding those onto this machine. But I'm also gonna be adding these fantastic aluminum 3D printed SLM brackets and they're made by PCB Waste and a huge shout out to them because they have done such an amazing job on this. But the great thing about PCB Waste is that they provide other things than just PCB manufacturing. They also do other additive manufacturing and subtractive manufacturing processes which are just phenomenal. And to get the one-off products from them, it just saves time and also money. Go check them out because it's certainly worthwhile. So what I'm gonna do first with this build is I'm gonna tear it down, turn it back into different pieces because I need to go through and mill some of these parts and make them wider so they can fit these uh, larger gears in them. And I also want to go ahead and mill out some end plates for this machine too. So once I've done that, then I can rebuild it, put it back together and I can experiment and see how well it goes from there on. So let's jump into the tear down straight away and get this dismantled, ready for altering the parts. Let's go. Now to fix the issue that I was having with the belts colliding with the X axis, I needed to add in larger idlers. Now that created a bigger issue for me because they just didn't fit with the C-beam frame. So what I had to do is firstly use this uh, 13 mil end mill fantastic end mill for milling aluminium and it's gone through and just widening that C-beam frame there. And then after that using an eighth inch end mill to come through and bore some holes in, which became very useful later on for when I'm mounting the frame together and creating a much stronger bond between the frames, especially the joints in the corner because this actually made it much easier to assemble later on. So I was a little bit apprehensive of diving into milling aluminium. Um, it's just not something that I've usually done, um, but I'm using this 13 millimeter 6060 aluminium and it milled beautifully. My Matilda CNC handled this without any problems at all. So I really didn't like the finish on this plate. It looked like it was straight out of the factory. There were scratches all over it. And I really wasn't liking the, uh, the finish on the backside of this plate. So I ended up getting some 3M 8447 scotch bright pad and I, I used it just to kind of sand away and finish off the faceplate of the aluminium and this has come out with a really beautiful soft brushed look on the aluminium and I really love it. I know I'm going to mark it and absolutely destroy the finish on it as I'm installing it but I didn't really matter too much because this build is all about experimentation and learning new things and I really feel like that that's what I'm doing here is finding out new methods in, in finishing things and experimenting and exploring different things. So moving on from the aluminium plates, I went and installed the motor straight onto there and that worked out really, really well. And on from that, I went to assemble the frame. This came together really, really fast. I think I did it within an hour or so. It also made it really helpful that I had milled these or bored these holes as well. And that made it super easy to assemble the frame and put it together. And I did find that the frame was so much more rigid after I had put these uh, through bolts into the ends of the aluminium and I didn't need to put corner brackets on anymore. So I was really appreciative that I went to the extra effort to put those in as well. And then I went on to installing these motor mounts onto the frame itself. And boy, I'm really thankful that I'm using the aluminium plates because the plastic plates at this stage started to bend and there's a huge difference within the quality and the rigidity of using aluminium. Okay, so I've installed these pulleys already. You can see here that I've upgraded the larger one there. Um, on the top one, I still need to upgrade it to the, the uh, larger version of this one up here. But I've just put it in there for a dummy install just so I can see how everything's going to fit. Um, it's working really well, but one thing I forgot to do was put a flat part on the bar. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this and quickly grind that down to make a flat bar. 
All right, flat spots have been ground down and ready for installation. Okay, now I've got that installed, I've got the larger pulley on top as well as the uh, slightly smaller pulley underneath. Um, this will be a nice conversion from a smaller pulley to a larger one, just to ensure that this can um, place out more torque and then more strength overall. So um, I've got a, a drive belt ready for this. Um, it fits on pretty loosely at the moment, but I've got quite a long distance to tension the motor backwards. So I'm gonna go ahead now and try and tension the motor back this way and get that belt nice and tight there. Here we go. All right, now time for the piece of resistance. This is the SLM printed, 3D printed in aluminium through PCB way. Man, they have done just such a beautiful job on these and I can't wait to sit it on this machine and see what happens. Now, these were 3D printed previously on my other version of this machine um, and I was always worried that they were kind of gonna break or pull away from a certain section just because there's a lot of force that pulls away from especially these corner parts here. And you can kind of see if there was too much tension and if this was plastic, it could have broken off. And so I want to try and avoid for doing that. That's why I got these 3D printed in aluminum instead. Um, they could have been CNC milled on a five axis machine as well. Um, however, it would have been really quite fussy and especially to get into some of these holes, it may have not been possible but I am super excited. The first time I've ever held an SLM 3D printed part before. So these are incredible. Um, the one thing that I did find um, after receiving these is that inside here is packed full of the powder that they use for the aluminum um, SLM process. I had in my head that this was going to be very much like a normal 3D print where it would just be like a hollow section inside. There is like a, a there is infill inside here, like a, a grid or a rib inside here. Um, however, in between each of those is packed full of aluminium dust as well. So I'm not really keen about opening this up and letting that dust go everywhere, especially for inhaling. Um, so I'm gonna keep it as it is for the moment, but if I do find they're a little bit too heavy for this machine, um, I might just be able to drill in some of these blank spots here away from the main supporting beam parts and hopefully clear out some of that dust. But anyway, I'm really excited about this. Now, first thing I need to do is go through and just check all the holes of the right dimensions. Um, I knew that when I was creating this that I made the holes a little bit smaller so I could drill them out. So I'm going to go through and just double check for those hole sizes and then from that go and install the rest of the eyelids and gears um, and then hopefully get on to installing the belt today. All right, so I've gone ahead and just uh, cut out these holes. So these are perfect now, ready for these M3 screws to go through, um, but from the back end instead. Um, so that works out really, really well. Now, I also have designed this a little bit different from the 3D printed part, just so there's more um, access for the belt to go through this so there's less collision there. But I also made some of the end of the hole, so a screw goes in here. This last little hole down here is much smaller, so I could tap into it instead of having to use like a bolt or something in there. Um, this still has remnants of um, the 3D printed part where I put a nut in here. Um, and as I kind of put it together, I realized I didn't need to have like a little nut housing in there. Um, instead, I've just done a, a threaded screw hole instead. So the bolt will just go straight in, makes it much easier. So I've threaded this part already. I'm just gonna move on to the second one here. So just going to thread that hole there and also, and thread this little hole over here as well. So here I go. So I've gone ahead and tapped the holes and time to install the hardware. So assembling this went really easily. I actually found that these aluminium plates, yes, they were a little bit heavier, but they actually created a lot more rigidity within the frame itself. They held the x-axis really strong in the center, and they also went together easily. Um, and then I wanted to check for the tapering of the frame itself, just to check that the frame hadn't changed shape, especially with me mounting it slightly different. Um, I was actually really lucky in this. The, the frame hadn't changed shape. It was uh, perfectly in alignment and in parallel on both sides of it so I was really thankful about that. Here is the belt. I'm just going to go through and now and install this straight into the machine. It shouldn't take me too long because I had already installed it previously and I kind of figured out the easiest way to do it. 
Now that I've got bigger idlers um, in the corners, this will definitely be avoiding uh, clashing with these side plates. So I'm really excited. I have tensioned these, um, as I said, so I figured out an even easier way how to tension them. So that worked out a lot better on this build. Um, so all I need to do now is turn it on and test it out. Okay, looking good. All right, let's go a bit further. Very nice. Very good. Fantastic. All right, that's success. So that's working really well. What I do need to do now is go through and calibrate it just because I've used larger gears. Um, so it's not going to be exactly as it was before. It's going to be moving a slight less distance. So I need to recalibrate for the new distance. So the final part was after calibrating the machine, I could move on to testing some G-code. So this is where last time that I had tested the G-code and I just used this simple spiral effect just to test out um, what each axis did on different angles. Um, and I did find last time that there was a lot of bumps and it wasn't very smooth. And I came down to the conclusion that that was due to the belt rubbing on the X-axis. And I was absolutely correct because here I go again, I'm testing this same spiral pattern and it has come out beautifully. Now, obviously it's not gonna be absolutely perfect. I did find that adding in belts onto a larger machine like this, there was that kind of um, backlash or slack in the belt. That means that every time that the machine wanted to change direction, it also had to pull that very large and heavy belt in a different direction. And you would always find that there was a slight movement or slight, uh, slight rendering especially of corners so you didn't get uh, so perfect perfect corners but for what i want to use this machine for later on uh it, this does not matter at all and and this would be down to like the micro millimeter issues that i could see happening what i'm going to use this machine for this is not going to be an issue at all now, just in summary, this machine for me was an experimentation. It wasn't really anything that I wanted to make into a serious machine. I was really more curious about a Core XY machine, but on a large scale. And for me, I've learned so much through that process and it really does work. And I think that this machine is a great example of a really successful way on how to set up a high speed machine, but in a Core XY kinematics. So there are some limitations though that I did find on the way is obviously the belt issue there is also less tolerances so unfortunately i don't think that this is a type of machine that i'd be using for things such as like a laser cutter or anything like that just where you need those absolutely precise um, movements but um, within time I, i'll certainly find the flaws and fix different things on the way and maybe i can improve this even further um, as I said, this is not something that I was really looking forward into this build, but I've really enjoyed this process. And I think that if I could pass on any knowledge to you guys is go through and build something that you find curious because you're gonna learn so much on the way. So I was really thankful that I did give this a go um, because I felt like that this has been a huge learning opportunity for me but also creates lots of opportunities for me in the future as well. So one thing that has made this whole build possible as well is also the electronics. Now, the, the feedback motors that I've used have, have been absolutely fantastic, especially within keeping the motors going and in the correct place, but also the control board that I'm using this. So this is using the Root Controller V3. Um, that has been an absolute blessing on this machine, and I've really loved using Using that controller and I do use the root controllers pretty much on all my machines because that is highly trusted it's fantastic when you're trying to set up something simple but I also love it because it essentially has extra protection to stop anything else impacting the movement and the quality of your CNC I am going to be using this um, a lot more on larger projects and I love you guys to follow along with me because I've got another episode that I want to bring out with this on the things that I'm going to be doing with this larger core XY machine please feel free to like my video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.